What's up, guys? Hey, uh, we're super excited. Pumped. Because uh, we have a little bit of a presence on a couple of different platforms, TikTok and Instagram. Uh, thanks to this gentleman, TJ Kaffenberg, really spearheading that. But we're going to start doing some longer form YouTube style um, kind of deeper dives. Yeah. Golf swing, everything. Golf, hunting, short just information and trying to help people further their games through YouTube. So, what are we talking about here right now? Well, I think if we're going to start with some you know, fundamentals and some basic concepts that people can work with, one of the main things you got to learn how to do is move through the impact position well. And in ways that supports things like bottom out of control, club face stability. Um, you got to be able to do that well before you build on and add other layers of complexity. Absolutely. Uh, I think we hear about impact industry, but it's just like kind of thrown out like, hey, you do opposite make sure the green tax good and the foot needs to be here, da, 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 da. there's like not really an explanation beyond just that. But like make sure your impact's good, make sure your hips are open. It's like super limited. Like what does that even mean? What does that even mean? Right. So why don't we start with this? I'll go ahead and set up for a, a shot here, Teach. Um, and I think oftentimes when we talk about impact, we're not talking about a specific point in space and then like right here P7 is impact. You talk a lot about like everything in our golf swing being dynamic. So if players can start to see that impact would really be so we're all the way to like P6 which would be shown level to the ground again somewhere in this general area all the way through P7 to P8 which is shaft level to the ground again that's what we mean by impact. So it's a rather large phase. So not just here at the ball. Not just there at the ball. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because I could have the face look relatively relatively square right here. Go ahead and go into like a body impact area. Okay, and so right here, bang, club face is fairly squared. But if then I look another foot and the club face looks like that, we get a problem. Yes. Right? Yeah. In essence, you just happen to guess okay at P7. And then P7.1 looks ridiculous. Exactly. 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 Yeah, so looking at things more from this uh, perspective of like just dynamics okay. through the impact area would be very, very helpful. I agree. Okay. Um, in your opinion, in your mind, how do you organize the face and balance out the face during that P6 to P8 phase? Sure. I mean, so if we look at this little P6 area, like you said, shot low to the ground. Looking for a few things here, like I, I don't want to be approaching the golf ball with the face wide open. Okay. And why not? Well, because then I can't really rotate the chest well to get the club to impact because now that club face is open. Yeah. So I would have to like massively rotate kind of over the top here to actually square the thing. Yeah. Whereas if I'm in here with the face relatively square to spine angle, somewhere point toe down, 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 toe down. Yep. Right, then I can turn here nice and easy. Yeah, that impact position makes it square. Yeah, and I think one thing if you go to that cruddy one that you were just explaining where the face is, is, is open, what we often see actually is an extension where the, the pelvis will come to be, the spine goes up, and that's what rapidly closes the face. Because yeah. in essence, you need to stop rotation to square it. So now I can fling it. But if you if you're in a good spot like you were, go back there again. Okay, and you were to just like try to rotate this down, you're gonna run into a problem because you run out of room. So that's why we see this massive late extension, late throw to square the face. Yeah, exactly. And the club face would look like that to describe as well. So heavy regular rotation of the club face, tons of extension through the stride, and again it's just like guesswork, and that's where the frustration comes. Major frustration, because you might guess right once in a while. <laughs> yeah. If you get this flusher. Woo! But you don't know if it was the actual correct move. Yeah, exactly. The very next swing on the range, it feels exactly the same when the ball's going sideways. Right. Tick tock. So, great. So, go back there again. So, we like to see the, the, the face a little bit down. How are you doing that, just generally speaking? How did you organize to there at P6? What did you do? When I take this thing, so I've organized the face early. Mm -hmm. Take it up around this top of the back swing ish position, yeah. right? Yeah. What kind of body stuff do I need to go ahead and fall into this organized position? 
position. Yeah, so we'd love to see a little drop so we back up there with feet forward. Awesome. So when we drop, especially on this trail hips, the pelvis just falls. Uh, TJ's really good at this in the back swing. Go back to our feet forward. And a little bend. You see this beautiful seat out shape right here. So now we want to go from this bend to that bend, drop and bounce into that bend. Okay. Whoa. Boom. Now you're in this trail bend, like you can see all the wrinkles in TJ's shirt, like he's bent here, like right underneath that armpit. And there is to some degree shoulder extension, which is the arms firing down to get the golf club down. They do need to come down. So. Okay. All right. So now we've got the face kind of toe down. You're already up in good bends. You drop a little bit. So if you just simply keep the same amount of bend and turn the chest, there's it then. Late, like from P6, P5.5, somewhere in there. What we want students to just generally be able to do, and this is what they're doing, is they're using that upper spinal that we talk often about. So right up in here, the chest they rotation. Feel like from this position, it's all upper spiral. Yep, exactly. Upper spiral. Yep. So, and in general, you can think of like, everybody talks about hip rotation. First of all, it's a long terminology because hip rotation is the femur rotating in the socket. So it's really pelvic rotation that we're seeing. Pelvic rotation, that's not in our minds, that's not what the rotator is. The okay. main rotator is in the chest. Okay. So you can think of like two different systems. We got ribs up, we got ribs down. This is pelvic system, this is rib system. Okay. The rib system is the rotator. The pelvic system is the dropper. Does it rotate? Sure. Passive rotation because of the ribs. Because it can't just stay, you know, and it's got to follow the ribs if the ribs rotate. Right? Exactly. Like right there, you see that this is the main engine. Um, did the pelvis rotate? Yeah, sure. Sure. It did. But it wasn't my first, exactly, first move. And what that just did, pelvic rotation causes early move scooshion. Yeah, major. So yep. a lot of people get this idea in their head that they want to rotate, but they've heard a video saying, rotate your hips. Oh, the extension. Now what do you do? Yes. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Fair enough. Yep. Exactly. Because the rate of rotation goes up. Typically, for good players, there's a lot of bend, like low spine bend, to go ahead and like counter that, so that now I can get the golf club in somewhat of a hittable position over here. So my low point gets whacked out. I got to block. I got to do all kinds of makeup. Yes, manipulation. Right. You're just trying to. You're trying to fix the screw up that you did when you hurt, which is causing a problem. So yeah, rotator, ribs, dropper, pelvis. So that's in your mind. That's the main thing the pelvis does. It's all of the pelvis. It's just drops. Drops. So if I'm going rotate, see, there's a point where okay, the ribs are rotating, but now if I keep rotating the ribs, the pelvis gets drug along. So from right here, if I just drop. There's my, there's my trail hit. If I drop the pelvis and then use my ribs to rotate to the other side, now, did the pelvis rotate? Yeah. Did I start to extend? Sure. But it's late and it's gradual extension. The trail, it's appropriate extension. Yeah. Okay, so that's really good uh, to teach because I think just better understanding where rotation comes from, what the club face should generally look like, all of that stuff is helpful, but then we need to find a way to put it so drill-wise, let's walk through what we call progression two, which is preset. So the way that we do this, guys, is you go into a, a, a generally a nice setup position, and then from here you're going into a mock impact position. So this is going to mock out P7. P7 is the position of impact. So from right there, let's drop the pelvis, and you're going to use the upper spiral to rotate the chest into impact. So if you do that again, teach, just drop the pelvis and rotate the spiral at the same time and rotate the chest at the same time so it's like a... there you go good so what you'll see tj's chest is pointing right here which is about a 45 degree angle out in front of the golf ball so we're more target side here you'll see this beautiful shape he's kind of bent out right here and you'll see that he still has some amount of trail hip flexion okay so from right there how TJ's going to get out of here is really important. So in his mind, he's coming right back into this generally same position through this strike area. 
but he's going to use the, the ribs of the upper spiral to rotate him away. So let's go ahead and see that. Beautiful. And if you do that again, bud, what's really cool here, start rotating the chest to the chest goes and then here come the arms away. Keep rotating the chest. Boom. So if we do it improperly, go back in there again, you see players just fire these arms out and the ribs aren't the leader. No. The ribs need to lead. So the ribs go, go, go. Here come the arms. Good. From there, he'll just drop and start to turn the chest back into the golf ball. Bang, and there's, and there's preset. Okay, so let's go back here again. Now let's see it in one action, or one motion. Away, drop, turn, and there's the preset exercise. Okay, there's a couple of things that you can do as well. Um, we, we see this quite often where we love rotation through the strike so much that players will early rotate. Right. Typically that throws the golf club at the center of mass of the club over, and now you gotta fix it late yeah, if you're a good player. So what we need, and this is just general geometry where the club is going, go back into that preset, drop, boom. So he's right here, excellent. So now show just a little backswing area right here. And then from, from there, we want the club to go over here. So it falls under the plane in this transition phase. And we're gonna do that primarily by bouncing spirals or getting into this trail bit. So when he does that, there's that big heavy bend. You probably feel it right here as the yep, player. It's right under the plane. Yep, exactly. And you see how the golf club went under the plane now? So now you can rotate back into the strike. Bang, exactly. So yeah, that's, better. that's so much better. Yep. Yep, exactly. Rather than even those like the first one that you showed is a little bit fat. You're a super good player you know where this is supposed to be at the strike. So it's easy to early rotate, late fix, when we bottom up too early. That makes a lot of sense. Yep, exactly. So let's see that again kind of slow-mo. So we'll go into that preset, P7, drop, there's the turn. Now in general, the club goes up on top of the plane, it'll fall under and turn. Beautiful, so much better. Yeah. So now you feel as the athlete that through the strike you're rotating and rotation of the chest, is what stabilizes the face. And to be able to rotate it, you gotta have the club underneath the plane. Yeah, it's gotta get back here. It's gotta get back there. If we're here and we rotate. No good. You're probably gonna miss it by a foot. I know. <laughs> exactly. Probably not efficient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's excellent. Alright, so maybe we can talk about some like common things people might run into when they're doing this drill. Sure. Um, a couple two, three key misses. Yep. Perhaps, right? Yep. Um, so one that I see a lot is fat, for oh. one, like dumped on this trail foot. Yep. And they start to try to bounce into this thing. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, so I'm not going to describe that. So case. perfect. So two different ways to bend. So go ahead and hug the golf club to each and then just face the camera. Okay. So there's two different ways to bend. One is just generally if I just go this way. Okay. Where do you feel a lot of that pressure right now? Low right back, and then yep. some up here. And this low right yep, back. exactly. So see where he is, he's pointing it out. It's in this area here. That's all, generally speaking, L-spine, mm -hmm. right, or lower T-spine. So no good, not a healthy action. Even though your spine did bend, pretty, pretty inefficient way to do things. Because the other thing in that type of bend, this way, the center of mass of the ribs, again, we're looking from the bottom ribs, the lowest ribs on up to the top of his head is a, is a section, right, to, to pay attention to. The center of mass of that area now is all the way back in this trail foot. So you'll probably even feel that as the athlete, that yep. all of your pressure is in this trail foot right now. That's right. Yep, so we we'll go back up to neutral. What we prefer to see is what we call rib sweat. So in essence, TJ's gonna keep this shaft relatively level to the ground. And if we were to just drive the ribs up, there we go. See how now the center of mass in the ribs is now up over the top of the lead foot. Yeah, pressure is completely different. Though. Pressure is completely different. And now, if you take a look at where TJ's sternum is, the sternum is forward of where the golf ball was. And where the sternum is, from a face-on perspective, where it is in space at the moment of the strike, is going to dictate the bottom end. Okay. So instead of going preset, so go ahead and run the preset there. And then we're away, and we want to bounce bends. Instead of bouncing bends this way, okay, go back into uh, to P7 again, preset. We're going to go away, 
rib sway. There we go. So now his center of mass is all the way up. Center of mass in the ribs is up over the top or in on this instep of this deep foot. So now if you were to turn, beautiful. Step on its way up here. Way further up. Yep. Yeah. Especially for good players, like you'll feel like, okay, where well, I should the energy out is like boom. Up so in that, this area. So that rib sway that yep. you talked about is is that bend? Yes. So that's bend where though? In the trail side. So, and all of that bend, by the way, like now, just pressure-wise, where do you feel the pressure when your ribs sway? More, more so in the upper. Yeah, upper so we're talking yeah. this area yep. right here. Absolutely. So it's kind of like pit area. Yep. Yep, yep, rather than down in here. Exactly. Exactly. So what's trippy is even though TJ is moving left, he's going into right bend, or what we call trail side bend, mm -hmm. compared to having to move right to get into right bend. That's a yeah. common misconception. Ah. So when people say this trail side bend, they usually just move this way. Yep. Getting their bottom out way too far behind. Exactly. It's really and what you that. just saw, see the pelvis goes lateral, it's up here to just balance you out. Yeah, it's like a bounce. Right? The ribs go here, the pelvis goes there. But if the ribs go here, where the pelvis go? Uh, there go to sink. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the last. Exactly, but it's just balancing. Okay. Yep. So let's hit one, still the same like little preset exercise. Okay, and go away. A little rib sway will help the golf club fall not only underneath the plane, but it'll also get your center of mass far enough up. Balances you out. Beautiful. And that one actually sounded right. Yeah, that was a proper concept. Well. Exactly. Exactly. So that's one. One that I see is late tug with the arms. Okay. So when you say late tug with the arms, so late, late tug. So hop out of there and I'll kind of show this. Yes. So. Just because pulling on the arms is something that we see out of like an extension tilt pattern, right? We'll see players rotate the pelvis, which creates trail hip extension. Tilt with the ribs for good players. So now there's that bend that we're talking about where the bottom will get up here. And so I've got to take the arms and just drag the handle far enough up here to control my bottom out to some degree. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a, a leftover. It's like a, that feels like a hip like that's how I'm gonna hit the, hit the ball and that just is like left over after the fact. And so what players will kind of do is the face, like if I just take the handle and pull it this direction, so that never closes the face. No. So players will generally move well where they're in this P7 position that's nice, work away, get into good bends here, and now just take this as they turn, they'll just pull the handle up and hit shots that are like hurt, either fat or the face stays wide open. Right? It's like this late rub of energy in the arms. And that's a result of that tug. Exactly. There's the tug. So okay. we get this like late tug, like abduct, abducted move. And all you're doing is taking the grip and just pulling into the space this direction. Right? And so at the end of the day, what we want is the rotation of the chest creates boom, the club, the, all the energy in the club goes out. So players will actually feel the release in their hands much more than their arms. Oh, interesting. Okay. Right? Got so, it. I'm doing that again. Good setup in the preset. I'm away into that right bend. From right here, I want to unload the golf club on this plane along with rib rotation. So you're actively doing this unloading? For some players, yes. For some players, that would, that would do this. Yes, yes exactly. And for players that do that for sure, and like this drill is generally done at a very low rate of energy. Okay. If I rotate this harder, it's tough to keep this energy in here, like hold it or maintain this load, it just has to go. So that's why it's nice to do things at a low rate of speed. Sure. So I can feel how things match up. So in essence, what we're saying is that from up here into here, the matchup is unload from the hands and the ribs rotating together. That's what's gonna square the face, let the energy out appropriately with a rib engine rotation type of swing. So if they take this, you know, handle pulling tug across the chest out of their pattern, yep. right now they're actually forced to also work the rib cage in the proper way, right? That's exactly right. That's okay. the magic. Because they can't do this anymore. Yep. And the unload, by the way, is like our favorite, well my favorite, like, uh, is, is this kind of heavier flexion, levers flexion states. So now from here, feeling it go out, like the energy going out through an extension of the lead wrist. So what you'll see is the face is more bowed down. 
right? As I start to unload it, the rate of rotation of the front face is a heck of a lot lower. It's super stable. Yep, than that action. Yeah, and you're releasing the golf club. I think that's a common misconception for a lot of people who are stuck in this pattern happens. Yeah. So when they want to release it, it always looks like that, yeah. that roll you're talking about. Yeah. But that pattern, that's not, that's not running stable at all. Exactly. It keeps things stable for a long time. It keeps it super stable, and it's a matchup for certain movements. It's a matchup for flexion and rotators. It's not a matchup for an extension tilt pattern. The matchup would be drag and then late supination with this with this lead form, which supination is just that action. But heavy, heavy rate of rotation of the front face when you do that. And that's where you get like the high flow right shots or the like dark left ones or I guess And they just come at you out of nowhere and that's the frustration. That's right? super frustrating. So again, just to kind of go through all this, we've got like main things to just kind of play around with would be just this drop, especially in the trail depth, drop and rotate with the ribs to get you into where that preset position would be. Generally speaking, just understanding where the club is in space as it's moving, boom, up on top of the plane, under the plane in transition, and then out as I'm rotating. Okay, and what you were talking about before, which is this hinging, and I'm rotating the shaft this direction to go ahead and close the face. We're feeling like I do that early. Away, boom, see where that, yep. where it's at? Now I don't have to mess with it anymore. So I can just go, ribs, out. It's all in one action, drop, turn, up, under, out. Super simple little shot. So now I know what it feels like dynamically to move through this space. There's an impact. P6, or excuse me, P5. P6, this whole area, all the way through P8, that's impact. Now I can feel that, even if I'm hitting a full shot, I can feel up, out. That's the same pattern through the stride because that little preset exercise. Yeah, you're just putting more energy into the system. It's a bigger action. Yeah. Exactly. So, impact. Impact. That's how we do. That's how we do. We hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed making it. We're completely new to the YouTube game, so don't forget to comment with any suggestions on how we can better this in the future. And if you enjoyed this video in particular, please like and subscribe, because we're gonna be putting these out on a weekly basis for a long, long time. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.